everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today I'm going to be going through all of the major details of this LEGO custom build. We have the E-Wing in front of us. I'd say it's one of the most recognizable ships that have come from the expanded universe. This never appeared in any of the episodic movies or major TV shows, minus maybe the Yona Chronicles had a weird version of the E-Wing. Obviously, this storyline isn't really meant to be taken too seriously in terms of legend or canonized stories, but it is nice to see even back uh, during the production of this show that LEGO designers knew enough about the canonized, at that time, E-Wing to base Jek's stealth starfighter off of it. In reality, this ship was first seen in the early 90s from the Dark Empire comic books, and it was later seen in many of the Expanded Universe books, and really this ship was meant to replace the X-Wing. To make a long story short, it wasn't as good as the X-Wing at first, lots of pilots didn't really want to switch over to it due to a lot of problems it was having, but eventually it did actually become a pretty reputable starfighter. And by most accounts, and certainly on paper, the E-Wing in its most updated or final stages could indeed outperform a T-65 X-Wing. All right, all right, that's it for the history lesson on this ship. I'm not going to get any deeper into the expanded universe right now. And before I get into any of the heavier details of this model, first I would like to say that the building instructions can be found at our web store, that's www www.brickvault.toys. This is another build from the incredibly talented designer Flying Waffle, and with each purchase comes the PDF step-by-step -step building instructions as well as a digital parts list that you can upload online to instantly order all the pieces that you'd need to make this build happen. The designer, Flying Waffle, also made this ship in three different colors. You've got the white and red, the one that we've built, but you can also build it in white and blue, as well as gray and green with a little bit of the yellow accent highlighting similar to the color scheme of what you saw from the A-Wing in Rebels. So anyways, buying instructions is a great way to help support us here at the channel, as well as the awesome designers that work really hard to make these great sets for you, like Flying Waffle. But now it's time to get into the major details of this model. First off, let's check out its actual functions. The E-Wing has a cockpit that you can see the single minifigure in there. You see the uh, same windscreen for the X-Wing was used for this ship as well. I think with in-universe, this windscreen is sort of impossible to get just right. It feels like a lot of the imagery depicting the E-Wing just has a much longer windscreen than an X-Wing, but not much thicker. So the designer decided to go with that nice low sleek mold for the X-Wing windscreen, but certainly stayed accurate to a lot of the artwork by not sinking the windscreen down into the body at a slight angle. The way you access it, you actually have to take off the top cannon. And there is a somewhat interesting design that makes up that initial control console in the front. The clipped on lightsaber handle type piece serves both as a front control console, or at least something that's giving a pilot a reading, and it also somewhat fills in a little bit of a gap further back in the build as well. It's got a super interesting connection point here. At the bottom you can see that cone piece. Technically according to the ship schematics there should be some type of proton torpedo launching area. So that little detailing at the bottom I've sort of dubbed the proton torpedo <laughs> launcher, though I have a feeling Flying Waffle really needed a an interesting way to fill in a gap based on how the nose comes together towards the front. I'll get more into that detailing in just a second. And then the second function, it's kind of a funny one. What makes the E-Wing a little bit unique compared to many of the other starfighters is that the astromech droid can actually fit on the inside of the ship. There is a way to get this hatch to open up here. You can pull this top panel on the back ever so slightly to make a little bit more of a gap. And if you're really careful or hold the hinge in a certain way, you can actually get the top to open up, though it is a little bit of a delicate feature and I just generally prefer to take off the side paneling and fit the R2 unit in uh, on the sides. It actually kind of looks cooler this way. And when all is said and done, uh, the R2 unit is completely concealed and I assume much better protected when on the inside of the E-Wing. Outside of that, the model itself doesn't have any other interactable features. It does indeed come with a stand, however, you can pose it uh, leaning forward or back. I definitely prefer the ship canted back ever so slightly. And now let's take a closer look at some of the design aspects that I think make this model excel. At first glance, the E-Wing from the nose to the cockpit looks very, very similar to that of an X-Wing, but you'll notice that the nose does not have uh, quite as much of a cone shape. There are just simply less angles on the nose of the E-Wing than compared to that of an X-Wing. It's a little bit more blocky. When you look at the original concept art and the comic book art, that's 
that's just how these ships looked compared to the X-Wing counterpart. Also, what can be seen in the original concept art, I think in every depiction of this ship, is that the E-Wing wings can't downward ever so slightly, and that's not necessarily the easiest design to add to a ship like this. The angle is very subtle, and Flying Waffle took extra special care to make sure the gap between the hull and the wings was extremely minimal. You can hardly see it, and it keeps the shape of the ship looking very, very smooth here, even though when you look closely, you can see the studs have indeed reversed here right at the bottom. Because of the interesting connection point here for the wings, the supporting strut here that is seen in all versions of this model within the artwork actually serves a functional purpose here. I'm not sure how well the wings would stay on if the support support struts uh, weren't actually on this Lego model. So that's kind of fun that these serve a functional purpose just like uh, within the universe. This ship has two massive drive engines on the end of either wing. Don't get that confused with the laser cannons. They're actually these much smaller cannons that are on either wing and an identical one above the cockpit. According to the lore, these are type B laser cannons and they're supposed to be uh, much better, I suppose, than X-Wing ones. And now I just wanna show a few different points of the design where Flying Waffle really got the proportions down correctly. From a leveled out side view, you can see that the back is slanted down ever so slightly and it even juts out a little bit. The mechanical detailing behind the top laser cannon slopes into the body pretty seamlessly. And from a completely straight down the nose look, you can see he's matched up the angles of the wings coming off of the body and that extra little protection flap around the engines with a very high level of accuracy. Also now at this point, you can see there's a a few little intakes on the bottom. If you flip the model over, you can see he didn't neglect any of the details from the underside as well. The round tile with the hole is how the model connects into the stand, and then everything else on the body is connected because all of these studs have actually been reversed around to the other side. The two by twos are inverted plates. They add a lot more stability to the wings. And now let's get into the handling of this ship. Right off the bat, I'd say this is one of the models that you can pretty much just pick up in a way that you think feels normal. Obviously holding the model by the body is the best way to go. It is a very heavy ship. There are a lot of little pieces like in most mocks, so the models themselves are actually a bit heavier than that of what you might get from a Lego set of the same size. So holding it by maybe one of the wings I would say is not a recommended action. But putting your fingers or any pressure points on the side panels for instance or the top panels or the bottom panels isn't gonna pop anything out of place. The nose stays on kind of strong. You see if I wiggle it, the plate kind of along the top is sort of attached to the nose in a funny way. And the only thing that I can think of as a place to avoid touching is maybe this little connection point at the bottom by what I said earlier was the little proton vent or the, the area where the proton torpedoes probably shoot out. If you push on it hard enough, you can pop it at a place and then it's not hard to put back on. It's just, I guess, the only little weak point that I can think of off the top of my head. Obviously, you don't want to knock off the laser cannons, but at the end of the day, this is a very solid build and extremely swooshable. So far with how episodes 7 and 8 have turned out within the canonized universe, I'm going to say that the E-Wing has probably been permanently reserved for just the expanded universe now, and from there I'd say it's certainly in the top three of most recognizable and well-known ships that never made it to the big screen and probably never will. I'm extremely happy with how well Flying Waffle held on to some of those angles that you see in the original artwork of this ship. And though a lot of the shapes are relatively subtle, if you ever see how the internal structure uh, of this hull is put together, you'll know that the designer went to great lengths in order to add these tiny little details to the ship and really make it feel like it came straight from the original comics. So thanks a lot to Flying Waffle for putting together such an excellent little design. And thank you guys for sticking around in this video for uh, until the very end. Remember, you can and buy the instructions at www.brickfault.toys. And if you enjoy our content, feel free to like or subscribe. Let me know what types of ships you might want to see us do in the future. And also, what do you think is the most recognizable Star Wars ship from the expanded universe? My money is probably still on the Outrider, but I'm just kind of curious to know what other types of ships you guys like that maybe aren't on the actual big screens. Okay, thanks again for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.